All right, guys, now we've done a few, a fair few comparisons of the really cool Protec Malibu against a handful of contemporary designs, namely the very famous Benchmade 940 Osborne, which I think this thing shares a ton of similarity with. But I thought today I would do a individual video really talking about the ins and outs of the Protec Malibu. Now, this I think is obviously not one of Protec's like oldest designs, but it is certainly one of their more popular designs, and I think for really good reason. Once again, very similar to the 940. When you're faced with this knife, you are faced with ultimately a super user-friendly, super pocket-friendly, EDCable kind of urban um, utility knife that is just good at doing a lot of things. You need to open packages, break down cardboard, um, do just different you know utility tasks, got to open a bag of chips, whatever. Um, the Malibu is going to really excel at those types of things. And that is primarily due to its um, edge or blade designs. Now, the Malibu most normally comes in a reverse Tonto like this. However, there is also a Warncliffe version, which to me, the Warncliffe version always looks a little bit more like a spear point, in my opinion, because it's more of a centralized um, blade shape. For me, when I think of a Warncliffe, I think of something a little bit more like this ABW uh, Model 1, where, you know, the tip just comes straight down to the edge and you're left with a very flat cut edge but the Malibu uh, in Warncliffe is a little bit more almost like a spear point but still very very long lines of a Warncliffe. However, like I said, in my opinion, I think the reverse Tonto is a little bit more of my preference because with the reverse Tonto, you get a lot of very good tip and edge control. And so with that, you you know just get a lot of ability to really set your edge and cut along a straight line. So I personally really like the reverse Tonto and I think most people do, as you'll see most uh, Malibus in this configuration. Now, another point to the Malibu is they do come in a wide plethora of handle materials, blade configurations, whether, you know, it's multi grind or single grind like this. Of course, more of your base models will have just a singular grind, but the nicer, more bougie models will have a compound or two angle grind to them. And they come in a wide plethora of steels. This one is a limited edition Blade HQ exclusive. So it is in CPM S45VN. Hopefully you guys can see that there. Um, the standard steel for this is CPM is CPM 20 CV, but they also make a good amount of variance in other steels. Once again, uh, Magna Cut, S45, and other steels. So there's a lot of variance when it comes to the Malibu, but what all of them do share in common, whether it's different handles, different you know blade steels, is this action. So the action, of course, is not a spring assist. It is not an automatic. It is a button lock, but it is ultimately a flipper. Now, this flipper also runs on caged ball bearings, and that makes it incredibly smooth. We've definitely taken a look on the channel at just how smooth this freaking knife is, but you guys can see here, like, I'm not really shaking this knife a lot, and it is absolutely swinging like a guillotine, and that is what I like the most about the Malibu, and I think what most people like about the Malibu. This action is so well-tuned, whether you buy a more base model like this version or a super nice bougie version of this you get an incredibly nice gliding action that is absolutely almost cathartic to open and close now like i pointed out in other videos to be fair there are knives like when you break in a benchmade 940 you can see that this runs on washers and it is very smooth itself so i don't want to say that you know you can't get smoothness in other knives but it is undoubtable that out of the box smoothness is absolutely incredible with the Malibu. Now, when you do have this knife open, you are left with a really comfortable handle. Once again, borrowing in a lot of design inspiration from knives like the 940, you're left with this fairly minimalistic design, but it does have a little bit of 
texture to it. Of course, you have some relief cuts. You have a relief cut here, here, and here to make wrapping your fingers around the handle nice and easy. Of course, we also have a mild finger groove towards the front to really fit your hand. But outside of that, you really are just left with a super comfy uh, handle to grip. And one of my more preferred things about the Malibu is the fact that you have this nice flowing edge. What I mean by that is the knife has this nice sweeping belly all the way to the conclusion at the tip. And what this just means is a little bit more of a natural cutting geometry when you are naturally rotating your wrist to cut through objects. And so that's why, you know, in a lot of skinning knives, typically things like Nesmuk designed blades, you will see these, you know, low flowing, um, you know, uh, almost like a reverse, almost a reverse recurve kind of blade where you just have this flowing belly that really helps you um, kind of amplify your cut as you move along in a natural pathway. Now, of course, each and every blade shape is going to be useful for certain situations. Once again, recurves are useful in their own right for channeling and kind of gathering materials into one singular part of the edge. This is a little bit um, unlike that, where it's really designed to you know flow through things, cut things nice and gently. And I think that also kind of makes sense because this is a thinner blade stock, not super, super thin, not like TRM Neutron or Atom Thin, or you know, it's like super, super thin but it is certainly getting there it is on the thinner side once again the trms still have this guy beat for thinness of the blade but this is not too far behind and i think that really lends its hand to being nice and slicey and slicey it really is now out of box i was a fan of the edge it is just fine but i did end up kind of polishing it lightly um, with my wicked edge just to give it a little bit more sliciness and once again when it comes to polishing a blade. I don't always polish a blade, but it really depends on what the application is. For me, I don't mind polishing my EDC knives because the majority of what I honestly do with EDC knives is either opening boxes or breaking down boxes. And a lot of like the things that I get, whether that be boxes of cereal, pizza boxes, Amazon boxes, a lot of these things just nowadays, you know, there's just lots of cardboard boxes. So a lot of it's, you know, like you open a package, but also on the flip side, um, when I go to recycle a lot of the cardboard that I end up getting in my life. I cut down that cardboard into, you know, bite-sized pieces so I can fit them into the trash can so that the people that pick up my trash can, you know, pick it up properly. And it's not just, you know, like stuck in the trash can. So for me, a lot of it is, you know, processing and breaking down things like cardboard. So in those regards and in that kind of um, use case, I would say high polished edges are going to be better because a high polished edge is going to resist the friction breakdown down of an edge and that's largely what happens with cardboard. Cardboard is a very abrasive material more than it is a you know hard material so if you don't have or if you have a polished edge um, the blade is going to be more resistant of that high abrasive nature of cardboard. So that's kind of just a little bit, you know, into the weeds on that, but that is why I tend to polish a lot of my go-to, you know, main frontline, um, you know, cardboard cutting knives, such as my, you know, Neutron that wears a mirror polished edge and a handful of my others, like my S110V Manix that wears a mirror polished edge. This one, like I said, is a little bit on the dull side of a mirror polish, but not too shabby. Um, definitely is a slicer. Now, aside from that, other things to say about this knife, about the only thing I really dislike, to be honest, on the Protec Malibu, and this kind of goes for several models on Protec, is the pocket clip. And these pocket clips, as you can already see and probably hear a little bit here or see, and definitely hear a little bit, is that I really dislike the um, Protec pocket clips because they tend to not fully seat against the handle of the knife. And what I mean by this is, if you look at something like this TRM Neutron, you see there's no gap between the pocket clip and its lowest point and the handle, right? It comes to a full conclusion. Well, on a lot of these uh, Protex, you can see here, sorry, the backdrop's a little bit not conducive to this, but you can see that there's a clear gap between the lowest point on this pocket clip and, you know, the, um, handle. And so what I really dislike about that is the fact that 
when you have a gap like that, it loosens or lessens your retention of your knife in your pocket. And once again, this isn't solely a Malibu thing because the same pocket clip is used on knives like the Runt, like the Malibu, and uh, several of their other newer knives. I even think the um, like the PT Plus, the new Strider um, Protect PT Plus uses a very similar pocket clip to this. Um, so overall, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this. I do like the fact that it is deep carry. It is nice. This is more of a traditional, you know, kind of Protec slash Strider pocket clip here. But I like that, you know, this is very industrious. It's not, you know, going to really bend up on you and it just works, right? This, I find a high tendency for these to come up and you just have to bend them back. Once again, not a huge, huge deal, but I feel like it's something that I've ran into on multiple Protex that I've either handled, you know, borrowed or used or owned myself, obviously like this Protec Malibu here. And so I think it's worth mentioning because it's like I've encountered it enough for it to be something that I notice and that I dislike. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video, taking a look at the Protec Malibu. I know that this is not a brand new knife and, uh, you know, it's um, definitely one that's been around for a little bit or a little while, but I think it's definitely one that's worth talking about. And if you haven't already checked out the Protec Malibu, it is totally worth checking out. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.